If you want to pass the guaranteed failure, what you need to do is have no routine. If you have no routine, you're never going to get anything done. You're not going to move forward with your goals. And let's just say there's a reason why pretty much every successful person has a routine. No matter what you think success is in terms of what realms it's in. Even people of knowledge, of course, they have such a strict routine. But even other things like business per business people, right? The richest people in the world, super hardworking. Or even something like athletes. They also have a really strict regimented routine. Now, even though routine pretty much means success, I'm not saying you need a whole day-long routine. Like, you know, for example, in school, you have eight hours that's pretty much filled out, right? For example, hour one, you're doing something, you're going one period to another period to another period. I'm not saying you need that for your whole day, but I'm saying you need at least some cornerstone habits and routines that you do every single day. So more of just doing the little things over and over again and being consistent on them instead of maybe the hour long or two hour long tasks that you're going to fill out for yourself. And so all the stuff I'm going to try and advise you with is easy stuff, honestly. Like it's not going to be hard, it's going to be simple. And if you actually do these things consistently, I think inshallah you'll see a improvement in your life. The first thing you need to do is add more sunnas and du'as in your life. Now I practice these things together because they're kind of similar and they're all, you know, very small things. But you need to revolve your life around sunnas. And the way you do this is you need to learn the sunnas. So how many sunnas do you actually know? Like, there's honestly sunnah for everything. I mean, if you actually look at hadith and stuff, you could probably find a sunnah for the smallest, littlest things. And accompanied with those sunnas are du'as, right? For example, do you know the du'a you're supposed to say when you wake up? Or not even just that one, but morning du'as in general. Or evening du'as. Or the du'a you're supposed to say when you walk out of the house and in the house. These are all things that you can improve your life with just by memorizing them. And honestly, it doesn't take long, right? Like these du'as are simple, they're short, and they're easy to memorize. So what I recommend you do is strive every single day to at least learn some du'as. And I'm going to talk about that a little later. But not only just learn, but implement, you know, sunnas, du'as. Because these are little things, right? And once you do it once, you could pretty much do it for the rest of your life. Once you learn the du'a for waking up, you're probably not going to wake up another day without saying it. Or at least you're going to miss very few days because you just have it in your head. You memorize it. So it's very easy to say it every time you wake up. So these small little du'as you say, these small little sunnas you do, they actually make a big difference, right? They build up, especially on judgment day. You're going to have a lot of extra good deeds that you don't know where they came from. But it really just comes from the small, consistent uh, actions of doing sunnas. Now the second thing, and this is one thing that I actually highly, highly recommend you to do, and I do as well, is dhikr. Basically setting a dhikr target. Now everyone knows you should constantly be saying dhikr, but the way I like to do it is set a target for any specific words that you want to say. So for me, the words I like is saying astaghfirullah and alhamdulillah, because those ones kind of are important to everything you need in your life, right? Like think about it. Gratitude to Allah and asking forgiveness of Allah. Those are like cornerstone pieces of your life, right? So if you're saying astaghfirullah and alhamdulillah constantly throughout the day or setting a target, then of course Allah is going to bless you for that, right? Allah is definitely going to appreciate you being thankful and he's going to accept your repentance. So what I do is I set a goal. For me, it's 100 astaghfirullah, 100 astaghfirullahs and 100 alhamdulillahs. And I do that every single day at least, right? And of course, you know, you could go ahead of that, but the point of the target is to say, at least I'm going to get to that much. Now, maybe you're not as good. Maybe you can do up to 100. You could start as low as you want, right? Maybe do 10, maybe do 5. And honestly, do whatever thickers you want, right? But those are just the ones I like. And that's the target that I chose. And you realize that it kind of grounds you, right? Because let's say you take time or one section, one habit of your day to say these thickers that it just, you know, adds another aspect of remembrance, right? Remember, zikr means remembrance. So you're pretty much adding more time of remembering Allah. And Allah says that the people who remember Allah often are going to be the successful ones. So zikr is basically your ticket to success. Especially, in my opinion, with these two zikrs, astaghfirullah and alhamdulillah, it makes you appreciate life a lot more, right? Because you're being grateful and you're asking forgiveness for the shortcomings that you have in your life. Now, the third thing I like to say is something very, very important that you need to understand, which is having strict work times. Now, I know this sounds kind of broad, but let me give you an example, right? One habit that you could do or one kind of, I guess, behavior that you need to add to your life 
is what's known as eating the frog, or that's how some people call it. Basically, it's as soon as you wake up, maybe right after fudging, right? You want to do the hardest task, the most, you know, longest, most productive thing you can do. Do it right away. And, you know, it's called eating the frog because it's kind of the most disgusting thing. And you, you're just trying to get it out of the way as soon as possible. So if you do this, you know, it's going to make your day a lot better and you're going to be so much more productive. In my opinion, it's the best productivity technique. But more generally, I'm saying in terms of your routine, you need strict work times, right? Maybe you don't want to do it right as soon as you wake up. I would recommend that. But maybe, you know, maybe at school, like you're not always going to be able to do that. So instead, you just want to have some times that you delegate to doing work and you want to be very strict about it, right? Make sure you do work during those times and keep that as a habit. And if you do that, you're going to force growth, right? Because if you're strict about your work, no matter what, you're going to be consistently going towards your goals. So honestly, this is a flexible one, right? Fit it around your schedule, but no matter what, just be focused and be consistent on whatever times you set for yourself and actually achieve the work that you're going to do. So the fourth thing I would like to talk about is another very important one. I mean, I guess all of these are important, right? But it's gaining knowledge, right? Specifically, Islamic knowledge. Now, gaining knowledge is pretty much the most important thing for your iman, or one of the most important things, because when you have more knowledge, you're going to be more inclined to do more good deeds. Obviously, good deeds in and of themselves are going to be the thing that raises your iman. But if you gain more knowledge, you're going to want to do more good deeds naturally. And you're also going to be more averted towards bad deeds. And if you think about it, right, look at the most righteous people in the world. As a general population, they're going to be the very knowledgeable ones, right? The chef, the scholars, those type of people are always going to be the most righteous. And obviously, there's a reason for that. It's because knowledge does not directly give you iman, right? But it's a very strong, it's very strongly correlated with high iman because high knowledge, people with high knowledge are obviously going to do more good deeds. So set time aside to gain knowledge every single day. This could be really easy, by the way. Like, you don't have to complicate this. It could be as simple as reading hadiths, maybe reading one hadith a day. Like, that's so easy, so simple. Or reading some verses a day with translation, right? Reading tafsir, whatever you want it to be. Just make this a habit, right? Just set one time every single day. Maybe that's right after Fajr. Maybe that's right after Maghrib, whatever time you want to do. And just set that time aside to gain knowledge. And you'll realize that you'll just start doing good deeds naturally. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is disciplining yourself in your actions. Now, again, this is broad. So specifically, I mean just doing hard things in general. I don't mean, you know, one specific thing. Like, I guess all the other things I was talking about are specific. But this one, I just want you to do something that's hard every single day. And so that could be something like making your bed in the morning. Like, that's not really that hard. But the point is, it's disciplining yourself, right? The one I like is taking cold showers. And taking cold showers is actually hard, right? It's actually pretty painful. And I guess that's kind of why I like it, right? And it's not a big commitment either, right? A sh cold shower. You're going to get in there for like two minutes, three minutes. Um, and then you're going to get out. But it's still going to build your discipline up a lot, right? It's going to build up your pain tolerance. And these are things you need as a Muslim. For you, this would be whatever you want. You can do cold showers as well as you, if you want. Uh, you know, it's good for your health. So if you want to do it for that. But, you know, this could be making your bed in the morning, cleaning your room every, you know, whatever, every day or whatever you want, really. It's up to you, but just try and do hard things every single day. And that's actually how you build up your discipline. Anyway, I hope you got something from this video. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.